Welcome back. You're tuned into the My Cool Inventions Network. And in this section of the show, we always like to do something different. This is Tony, my special guest. We always hear about Tony in the background. He's one of our key producers. And uh, he, he is a man of many hats. That's what we put on there. He has many hats. He does it very much so. It was his birthday yesterday, so be kind to him. And what we're going to do is this section, we're going to call it Tony's Serious Question, where you're going to come up and ask me a question and, uh, you know, so, uh, hopefully you'll be able to hopefully answer. Hopefully I'll be able to answer. <laughs> That's right. So, so, uh, uh, so how did you come up with this concept anyways? What, did you try to put me on the spot, trying to tease me, trying to, you know, trying to figure that out with me? What? Kind of. I mean, you know, I, I sit here and I'm, as I'm producing and answering Facebook questions. I have... Uh, Questions of my own. All right. The show's going on, so you know me. And I'm Al a little scared to go forward and, uh, on this thing, uh, so uh, thought some stuff up. So okay, so, uh, so let's try it. Okay, right. what's Tony's serious question? Well, my serious question for today is, what's in a name? I mean, inventors they always come up with products, and I know even you've had a little bit of difficulty sometime coming up with that perfect name. That's not. You know, 20 names long or something like that, you know? <laughs> like yesterday's yeah. inventor's website? Yes. It was like yes. Uh, 20words.com. Like it was a huge name. And of course, no one's ever going to remember that. So your question is, what's in a name? Now, that's a very serious question because what's in a name is, uh, uh, you know, it might make or break your invention. It might make or break the name of your business. It might make or break uh, uh, your, your election run, you know, all that kind of stuff. So these names are very, very important. Now, the first thing I want to do is set up a rule. Rule number one, don't name your invention unless you can get the website. Dot com, not dot org, not dot us or dot tv dot com. You got to be able to register the name you come up with and get the URL. Okay, dot com. All right, not anything else. I've seen a lot of strange things, and you want to get all the dots. Dot ca, dot uk, whatever there is. Dot com is the most important one. So whatever you come up with, rule number one. Make sure you can get the URL, period, end of story, no rhyme or reason about it. Now, now the name part is crazy because I tell you something, I have spent hours, countless hours, trying to figure out what to name an invention. So some of my names, the really bad ones, are Floor to Ceiling Laundry Pole. Are you kidding me? <laughs> floor to Ceiling Laundry Pole. At least it tells you exactly what it does. It's a description name, but however, number one, <laughs> you can't get the, maybe you can get the URL, maybe I'm not sure. I never tried. And number two, uh, it's way too descriptive. We would never get a trademark. So number one, get the URL. And number two, can you get the trademark? That's number two. I got a couple questions coming in. John Dar Darwin. I hope I can see that from that far. What's in a name? How about New World Order? Well, it depends on what you're trying to uh, name. What is that? Is that a book? Is that a uh, you know? Is that a uh, coffee? Is that That's, whatever? That was for wrestling. New World Order. Oh, New World Order. I didn't know. Thanks. From I, WCW. I always have to, a young kid here. It's always good to have a young kid because he can tell me what's going on out there. So, number one, get the URL. Number two, get the trademark. Now, trademarks are tricky. Because, and we'll have another section on trademarks another time. But trademarks, I was just writing that. Oh, yeah, trademark. Let's write that down. And so, trademarks are tricky because, you know, you can't be too descriptive. Like, floor to ceiling laundry pole too descriptive. We'll never get that as a trademark because it describes the product. I'll tell you a famous one in Canada. We had a pizza chain, right, mm -hmm. called Pizza Pizza, right? Pizza Pizza is a huge pizza chain in Canada, right? The trouble is uh, they could never protect their name. Even though they advertised hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions of dollars on TV, radio, Pizza Pizza, and on t but they couldn't protect the name because a trademark lawyer argued to the judge that pizza, of course, is a descriptive name of pizza. But he did argued that pizza, pizza, two pizzas in a row, uh, defines the description. So it's no longer a description, becomes a brand name. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. So in fact, I believe Little Caesars started knocking off pizza, pizza in Canada because what they were doing there, remember that thing? Yeah. Little Caesars, all of a sudden, the little guy came up and goes, pizza, pizza. Hit the little yeah. fork down yeah, and the well, pizza would spin. Well, people didn't know. They weren't just reminding people of the pizza, pizza. But in Canada, there was a big trade war going on. Uh, 
they were they were basically uh, you know nudging it to pizza pizza by going ah little Caesar what about pizza pizza right remember that I guess they were the bigger guys they fought like if if we could go yeah. with this we could we could beat them out so so that's it so that oh so that's very important so the, oh we have another comment Steve Warpal says GlideGuys.com got it now for the trademark so there's an example by the way Steve I know you're watching uh, we were on the phone yesterday with Inventor Showdown buyer I think you're in buddy I think you're in if we can pass QA I think you're in so Bonnie's gonna get back to you so hopefully you get on that Inventor Showdown reality show no guarantees yet but there's a good indication so I want to let you know there GlideGuys.com those guys came with a furniture uh, uh, furniture movers and now he's got the URL GlideGuys.com and now he's got the trademark so he's passed two of my benchmarks, okay? And I'm going to use him as an example, Al, because that's a really great example, and we'll talk about something. Oh, I'll talk about it. So GlideGuys.com. It's Steve's trademark and URL. And I love it, and I'll tell you why I love it. A very famous man taught us something. His name was the best namer in the world. The guy who, the guy who has the best trademarks and the best names in the entire world, bar none, was a guy named Walt Disney. This guy was able to trademark names, and he made an empire out of the ability to name stuff, right? The ability, he's, he was the best name person in the entire world, and I'm sure if the if the internet were around back then, he would be, he, he trademarked all his names, but I'm sure he would have got the dot .com and all his names too. And what he did was a secret. This is kind of like a selling secret, a naming secret. His secret was he used double consonants. Right. Think about it. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. M-M. Double consonants. Mickey Mouse. Why do I like Steve Warpal's name so bad? much? Because he's using double consonants. Glide Guys. There's Donald Duck. Double D. Glide Guys is double G. Donald Duck. Glide Guys. Mickey Mouse. I wonder if Al has a couple other ones. Do you have a couple oh, yeah. other ones up there for us? Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola. Another great name because you can probably get the trademark. You probably get the uh, URL. And uh, it's a double consonants. Coca-Cola. C C. That's that's a really great rule. Uh, if you can get a C, you can get double consonants. People remember the name better and longer. Bugs Bunny. Right? He's surrounded by Daffy Duck and Porky Pig. Look at that. There's Porky Pig, B B Bugs Bunny, and Donald Duck. I don't think that's Walt Disney. That's um, that's Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. But they started copying Don uh, Walt Disney. So the people who were naming great things were copying the master. The master was I don't even know the year of that. Probably in the 40s or something. Uh, Walt Disney started using double consonants, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, right? So he trademarked those names and he realized that people would remember the name, okay? And then Walt, you know, Warner Brothers started knocking off Porky Pig, Donald, we saw a picture up there of Porky Pig, Donald Duck, and, oh, Porky Pig and Donald Duck, and what was Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck and Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Sorry, Donald <laughs> Duck. Bugs Bunny, that's right, I can't remember Even in the cartoon. comic books. Even, okay, comic books. So what, so what are the big comic book names? Marvel or what do they call those guys? Marvel, yeah. Yeah, so they started using the same concept on names, what do they come up with? Like uh, for the Hulk, you have Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner. Mm -hmm. See that? Double B, right? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top if of my head. If we had, uh, what's the other guy's more. name used to work here? He yeah, knows all he'd, he'd rattle them all off. I can't remember his name now. <laughs> Why can't I remember his name? Zach. Zach! Zach. If Zach were here, he'd have 20 of them. But the great names in the world... Um, Follow you. I want you to follow three rules when it comes to what's in a name. Okay, number one, get the URL. Don't, this is no, this is no. Listen, don't 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 cherry code it. If you can't get the URL, move on. Get another one that has the URL. You must have the .com and don't don't get the .ca or the .tv because I'll tell you why you don't want to do that. Because other people, if your name gets famous, can if they own the .com, they'll get famous too. They'll just basically ride on your coattails and steal your money. So you got to get the .com. Second, you got to get the trademark. So you be able to trademark the name and in order to get a trademark make sure it's not too descriptive you can't describe something and get a trademark that's why I said uh, uh, for example uh, Pizza Pizza wasn't able to actually trademark that name uh, despite the fact the lawyers argued uh, vehemently that the two pizzas in a row uh, and actually that would have been a good name if they could get it because Pizza Pizza is also a double consonant oh yeah if they could if they could have got pizza pizza.com and they could have trademarked Pizza Pizza <laughs> good name and I'll tell you why the name's so important it's not just that what's in a name, it's the whole value of it. Because if you're a businessman, I always say this, don't get into a business if you don't know how you're going to get out of it. Don't get into the business unless you have an exit strategy. And on a name, and if you're an inventor, sometimes the exit strategy is selling the name. 
Okay, so that's the value. You build up this name, and then you can sell it to somebody. What do you think Coca Cola is worth? I have no idea, but it's probably worth a small fortune, right? Well, so those. What do you think Mickey Mouse is worth? If I could buy the term Mickey Mouse, what, what would I pay for it, right? What's in a name? So, so that's why I want you to get the URL. That's why I want you to register to trademark, and that's why I want you, if you can. Now it's not possible all the time, but if you can, get double consent. So I want to congratulate Steve Warple over there and the glide guys because those guys I'm telling you something they got it they've got the name registered uh, for a trademark they got glideguys.com and they're using the double consonant so I love that name love it love it love it you know why because people will remember it now I think somebody's trying to write rule one URL rule two trademark and uh, rule three if you're going to complete the sentences uh, double consonants See if my brother, he's typing on Facebook, see if he knows how to spell consonants on there. Even I don't know how to spell. So let's leave it to him to see if he can come up with it <laughs> on there. So that's a great question, Tony. What's in a name? Um, and, and, you know, there's other sort of uh, uh, tricks to the trade. Uh, they say also that a, a sort of a fourth sub rule, a double um, syllable name sells better than a single syllable name. They used to say that okay. to be a president of the United States, you had a better chance if your name was like Nixon or Reagan, two syllables usually sold better than one syllable. Huh. So Clinton, the, you know, but Trump, beat, of course, beat Clinton, but the, you, you tend to have a slight advantage with a double syllable name to remember. Uh, I love Glide Guy, well, no, double syllable Glide Guy doesn't follow, but Don, I think it's not them, Donald Duck. No. So like Gold Trap. Gold, yes. <laughs> if you were running for office, Gold Trap, uh, Tony Gold Trap might stand a better chance for a guy than Jen Kura because it's three syllables, right? So those are kind of my insights on names. Those are my insights. I hope you learned something about that. And if you're an entrepreneur and you're an inventor out there, great question from Tony. That's my segment on what's in a name. And by the way, if you if you want to learn about something, you want to ask the experts, just type it in right there on the Facebook stream. Ask a question. We're constantly monitoring it. We have over 140,000 of you on Facebook watching. Uh, paying attention. So just write your questions over there. Follow us on LinkedIn. Follow us on Facebook and watch the Inventions and Gadgets channel. That's it for What's in a Name.